This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week one was pretty much a delight from start to finish, but finish is not officially here yet because we still have the Denver Broncos at the Seattle Seahawks, the Drew Locke revenge game, if you want to go with that, the Russell Wilson revenge game, if you are not as fun. We're going to break it down from a betting perspective, let you know our favorite bets across this across this game, both in the traditional markets and in the player prop markets. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com, joined here once again by Ryan Williams. Check out Ryan. Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, you were at the Chicago Bears game yesterday uh, in the <laughs> soaking wet. Have you dried out yet? And uh, how was that victory for you as a Bears fan? Yeah, I, I dried out. I was thinking about, man, do I just DM Jim <laughs> last night and tell him I'm not going to be able to make it because my voice is so hoarse? Uh, I feel like Chris <laughs> Collinsworth here coming on right. the pod. <laughs> but uh, no, definitely worth it. I mean, we had kind of talked about how much fun it was going to be to bet on this Bears team and kind of all the unknowns and how the pop, how the public was feeling about San Fran. And we were just I was just hoping for cover. I mean, I did, you know, have, I think, half a unit uh, on the Bears money line, okay. uh, which definitely felt good. Uh, There's a lot to celebrate yesterday. But I mean, that, that's the thing about week one, right, Jim? And that's why we're talking about this game here on Monday night is just like there's so much unknown and people yeah. want to cling to so much stuff from last year that it makes it fun uh, for, for this year and getting bets down in week one. And it could, it, it was, we saw it all throughout uh, Sunday's slate. We had the Texans with their tie. Uh, right. They were plus 270 on the money line. In that game, the Giants get the win outright uh, with the missed field goal at the end there. It was a fun slate of games. I mean, uh, my Cardinal stuff did not go well, but we can ignore that. We'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about that tomorrow in the recap section of the yeah. week. But we're going to be here every weekday throughout this week and every other week here on Covering the Spread. We do Monday Night Football previews every Monday as well to get you set for that week's Monday Night Football game beginning here today with the Seahawks and the Broncos. We're going to get to all that in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. I'll tomorrow have a first look at week number two, breaking down what my numbers say about the week two spreads, money lines, et cetera, et cetera, letting you know where I see value if I'm betting it or not, et cetera, et cetera. We'll also have Pitching Ninja on to break down some strikeout props. Wednesday is college. Thursday, Ryan is back on to talk more NFL. And then Friday, we JJ Zacharyson talking some player props for these Sunday games as well. So hit subscribe on Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Also, with college football and the NFL now here, it's time to get on the action early this season to help get you started. New FanDuel Sportsbook customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Whether it's spreads, money lines, or props, odds for that and more are available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just sign up, place your first bet, and FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. There's no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states only. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In, in Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In, in, in Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's take a look now at this Monday night football game. And Ryan, I thought with the with you being a Mizzou guy, I thought maybe we'd get a, a Drew Locke jersey or maybe even Albert Oak Wavenham. <laughs> like, I thought we'd get at least one of them, but didn't get that so i feel like we're just you're just down on the mizzou guys so i want to get your impression overall on this game before we dig into the the betting angles for this one tonight yeah i should have shown you my feet because i got my mizzou socks on uh, oh good it okay rough, it was a rough <laughs> matchup for us on saturday going against a former big 12 rival in kansas state but, saturday uh, didn't happen uh, as 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 i'm wearing my northwestern pullover here saturday didn't, didn't exist it wasn't a real thing Absolutely. No, it, it, it did not. And we'd like to we'd like to write the <laughs> ship there. Um, I'll tur turn my hat around here as we as we get into some action uh, as we're matching here. Uh, I love not it. planned. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this this uh, this game's going to be fun, Jim. I mean, I, I'm looking at the six and a half number 
uh, for a plus plus side for Seattle. And I just got to think that this might move to the magic number of seven as we get closer, closer to game time here. I, just so much of the public money and, and bets are on the Denver side of the ball. You're looking at 79 percent of the bets over 50 percent, close to 58 percent of the money uh, coming in on Denver side. And this just makes me think about last year when Tampa Bay uh, goes into Foxborough, the Brady return and how much hype was, you know, geared around that. And this is in Seattle, like the emotions could be running high. I don't want to say should, but could sure. be running high for Russell here. And and really, you know, we're looking at a coach there that had the propensity when he was at his former stop in Green Bay to run the football. So, I mean, if things are kind of looking like, you know, or maybe they get out to a lead early and they're just able to establish the run or but you, I just feel like this isn't the let Russ cook matchup that we might see. I think they're going to save that for games when they really are, you know, maybe underdogs or need to put their foot on the gas. And on the Seattle side, I just don't see that happening, uh, which makes me think it's going to be lower scoring. And, and Seattle has a chance to have it stay close if they can get into scoring range. Yeah, we did see the total come down a point this morning. It was 44 and a half, now 43 and a half. Uh, the spread has stayed pretty steady at six and a half for like a decade, it seems like. This one's been up for right. a very long time. It's been steady at six and a half thus far. You are probably getting the right read on it, though. Uh, it's minus 115 on the Denver side of things. So you are paying a bit more to buy on the Denver side. I It could get to seven before kickoff. And I think that's interesting in terms of the way we want to bet this game, because my numbers do show value in the Seahawks side. I, I can't quite get there yet. I've, I'm looking at it, it, though. <laughs> if hypothetically they were to give me a seven, that would get me because I've got it at a foo, doo, 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 doo. I've got it at four point oh two points. So that's okay. about a point and a half of value right now. If you get it to a full almost two points and give me that key number of seven, I'll at least be kind of tempted. And it kind of comes back to what you were talking about, where if this is a low scoring game where we see things kind of slow with Denver or with Seattle keeping the ball on the ground, that's going to increase the variance. Increased variance means it, we're, it's tougher to cover a seven point spread in that scenario. So for me, in the traditional markets, I feel like I am monitoring that spread. I am receptive to betting the Seahawks if it does move, but I'm not quite I'm not there enough yet where I actually want to put this one, you know, put some actual money on. I am holding off for right now, monitoring the situation to see what happens. What about you? Are you feeling good enough about any of these traditional markets to actually make a bet here? Or is it a situation where it's it's still in a wait and see mode to see if more pop value pops up later on? Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in the six and a half for Seattle for sure, getting those points. But I, I'll just wait it out and, yeah. and hope because like you said, this line has really not moved at all. There's nothing really, I think that would, necessarily move it i mean so kenneth walker right is is questionable we right. think that he's not going to play right maybe if he's officially ruled out that has right. the chance to move it to seven or i don't think there's any other key news that we get um that could really you know move it any any more heavily than that but i still think that just getting closer to game time having more bets having people settle in some monday exactly. and reaction you know reactionary week one news coming out uh i think they might tend to lean on uh betting betting more on the denver side than currently is i agree and i think that the other thing too is we you typically the public tends to favor favorites uh so if we're going right. to get money on this game before the actual money starts coming in you know if, if people are holding off on the seattle side of things right. i would bet that it would go towards denver so i'd hold off keep an eye on that that if we get that minus 115 to start moving on the denver side like if it becomes 110 that could indicate there's some Seattle money coming in. So right. keep tabs on it. Uh, the money line's been holding pretty steady at plus 240. So, you know, once you see those numbers start to tick, maybe that's when you start to dive in. If you are interested in the Seattle side, uh, which might not apply to very many of you because I realize <laughs> I could be on an island with this one. Let's talk about Russ and his first game here with Denver. And we haven't gotten to see this, this Broncos passing offense with like, I want to say upside quarterback play because Teddy Bridgewater was competent. And like, I don't want to like overstate how, you know, make it seem like Teddy's worse than he is, but this is an upside type passing offense. Now with Russell Wilson, there, throwing deep bombs. That's what he does. You know, it's touchdown or check down, that kind of thing. So I want to get your read. What's your read on this, this, the passing props in this game, given we haven't seen Russell Wilson, we haven't seen these pass catchers with a guy like Russell Wilson. We haven't seen Russell Wilson with them yet. What's your read on the overall passing props here? 
Yeah, well, I think he's at uh, two two fifty six, two fifty eight. 258, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Down to 253 and a half right now. So it's, we've gotten some uh, money on the under, it appears. Okay, so so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of where where my lean was. I mean, just thinking about the emotions again, riding high coming into Seattle. This is a defense that kind of you know knows him. Now, I will say though, there are some the injuries uh, on the Seattle side. Uh, I think Brooks, the linebacker, is is going to be out, or he was questionable. Well, I I believe for most of that week, we need to look at that news because I do like the run game for Seattle or for Denver. We'll talk about them, uh, but also Jamal Adams. It's he sounds like he's going to be playing with the cat. Uh, for most, if not all, of the season there on his hands, so they're dealing with some injuries on that side. But I still think, you know, just the just the allure of playing back in Seattle, the fans are going to be rocking. They're probably going to be booing him. He's not going to be used to that, uh, or at least you know, used to that as being the other opponent. I know right, they gave right. him some rough go uh, last year when he wasn't able to get it done. But but yeah, I do like the I do like the passing in the sense that I'm that's not steering me away from his weapons on the other sure. side. I just think from his overall standpoint, especially if they get out to an early lead and, and we've seen, you know, kind of this MO from the Seattle Seahawks and Gino, he, is he going to be able to keep drives alive? And if he can't right. get past the 50, then it's like, there's no point for them to have. I mean, they have two great running backs that they can just feed the rock to and let Nathaniel Hackett get out of here with the win, which new coaches yesterday, seven, seven, two and one against the spread. So, I mean, like if I'm talking about taking the Seattle line, that's what I'm facing against. But, uh, but yeah, I just think that Russ won't be asked to do too much. And that's why I like the under, and I guess the public does as well too. Yeah, uh, 253 and a half, again, the under there uh, for Russ on this one. I think I'd lean that direction as well in terms of Russell Wilson. I was also intrigued by unders on the actual pass catchers themselves. The problem is that KJ Hamler is also questionable for this game. He did get in limited practices throughout this week, but he's coming off a torn ACL. We saw Chris Godwin play despite not having not being cleared for contact before last night, but obviously that didn't. He left the game before it was over, so... That's a tough situation. Uh, Corlin Sutton right now at 63 and a half yards. Jerry Duty at 59 and a half. Now, what I wanted to do here was to look at the total receptions market because I was kind of thinking that this could be a spread out offense still because they still got Okawebanam. They've got both the running backs. They've got a lot of guys who can catch passes, but I think FanDuel has these markets set pretty well. Uh, Sutton under four and a half is minus 118. Judy under four and a half is even money. So I think for me, if I'm attacking this game and looking at the pass catchers, I'm intrigued by Judy under 59 and a half. That is even money right now because I just think that we'll still think, mm. see things spread out. The problem I'm having, Ryan, is I can just envision the Russell Wilson beautiful deep, deep ball going to Jerry Judy for like a 40-yard reception and kind of, you know, burying me right away. So I have not taken this yet, but I, I think that my my strongest inclination is towards Judy under 59 and a half with the pass catchers. Are you seeing anything there? Yeah, so I think that so this is going to be fun to watch for me because of the, the narratives all off season, all summer. We were talking about is it Sutton or is it Judy? Yeah. Who's going to be the number one guy in this offense? And like everything was kind of pointing to Sutton, you know, coming to Russell's house and they were hanging out over the summer and he's healthy now. And like both very you know, religious, that's all that matters with Russ. You know, we, right. we got that going for us. <laughs> Exactly. And then you're looking at Judy and I don't believe he hit, you know, now granted this was a different quarterback situation, but you're looking at last year, he's had a hard time staying healthy. And then also, mm -hmm. I don't believe he hit a hundred yards um, in any of his uh, games that he played in last season. And the thing about the deep ball that people want to talk about with Judy is that Cortland Sutton is, is a guy who's had great air yard numbers when he's been on the field. So yeah. like he does have the chance to be that deep ball threat with Russell Wilson. And if that's the case, it's like, this dude might finish as a wide receiver one in the, in this offense from what we're expecting. And like, this wasn't a regime that drafted Judy. So like they could just really, you know, people are expecting that. And so when you're looking at like the anytime touchdown um, market, I think that, you know, Cortland Sutton, at plus 140, I believe, is where he's coming in at. I, lo I love getting that action on him. I think that he's, you know, got a, got a significant chance to, to be able to do that. Um, and Judy's not, not far behind him, so I think that people might take that because he has the longer odds at plus 160. Um, so I still think there's, there's value in that. Um, but also, yeah, I would be looking at Cortland Sutton's re reception uh, numbers, too, just just in the sense if you're talking yourself into this being, you know, any type of competitive game or if you're betting the over, then you definitely want to look at the Denver passing props there. And I'd be I'd be fine to lay that money uh, with Cortland Sutton. 
Yeah, the touchdown prop, I think that with Sutton, you think back to like, I think it was his rookie year or his second year, whatever it was, the year where he was like single handedly just like carrying the Broncos offense. Like, I right. think about that whenever you mention a 10 touchdown. So, uh, plus 145, the number on Sutton right now, if you want to get on that one, which I think is interesting for me as well. Let's talk here about the backfield. We got Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, a lot of discussion around the divvying of the work here. Now, I was hoping we get a rushing plus receiving prop here. Not up yet at FanDuel Sportsbook as of right now, because if Melvin Gordon's going to get work, it's probably going to be more so in the passing game than than for Javante. Uh, Javante Williams' number is 16 and a half, minus 113 uh, both ways. Uh, Melvin, 38 and a half rushing yards, minus 120 in the over, minus 106 in the under. Any read for you on those two guys, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely going to be firing up Melvin Gordon. Uh, I think he's over 38 and a half on his mm -hmm. rushing props. If I have that line correct, it hasn't moved. Uh, it is minus 120. So you you absolutely love that juice. I might be looking at some alternate lines for him when, when they get released, just because Nathaniel Hackett has already said that they are going to use the hot hand at the running back position that both of these guys, you know, it's funny, like you kind of see these narratives like trickle over from the previous regimes. Like we were kind of getting that from the Green Bay Packers, right. like, Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon are the one a one B in this offense. Like they're going to be used. And that's what we saw from green Bay, even with them trailing, like these guys were both out there and like, I get it. They don't have that many weapons on green Bay as Denver has, but we were looking at the touches from last year and Melvin Gordon was right there with Javante Williams. As far as touches go uh, both, both over 500, I believe on those numbers. So, you got to think that, especially if Denver can control the pace of this game and get both of these guys involved, I think that, you know, he's going to be a guy that you're going to be wanting to, you know, get get his rushing props, play him in your DFS lineups and single game and things like that. It, it should be a fun one to see. But I think that, again, you're talking about a guy, Javante Williams, who's the younger back, who I think they right. were use. They brought Melvin Gordon in for a reason. I think that he's still going to see some work in the red zone. Um, it makes for an interesting anytime touchdown uh, prop. Bet, uh, but as well as getting over his rushing yards, if they're not going to get it over uh, over 40, I like that number. Yeah, it's easy to forget that Melvin actually played really well last year. You look at like their EPA right. splits with and without Melvin, like they were a better offense with Melvin Gordon on the field than they were with Javante Williams. That's not to say that Melvin Gordon is a better player because there's a lot of noise in EPA splits and stuff like that. Like they are a very noisy staff, but he did play pretty well. And I think that's worth mentioning. Uh, it depends on who you were looking at in terms of like, you know, the touch distribution between these two guys, but it was either like 55, 45. Uh, some people said 65, 35. That's a really big difference. So I, I would like more precision between the beat reporters uh, on this, this breakdown, but um, I think Melvin will still be involved and that impacts both my thoughts on him and on Javante. Let's look on the Seattle side of things here right now. You mentioned Kenneth Walker didn't practice at all this week. So I'm guessing he won't play. He's questionable right now. Rashad Penny's rushing prop is 69 and a half. Any read for you on that one or any other Seattle player props here? Well, definitely if Kenneth Walker, well, I'll just say this. First of all, uh, Rashad Penny over 69 and a half rushing yards, I believe is what it's at. Like we're just we just are taking that number. <laughs> um, and and I, 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 I try not to say locks, Jim. I said that Tampa Bay two and a half was a lock with you. That's the only time that I said that. And I said, I wasn't going to say it again. So <laughs> not going to use the, not going to use the four letter word. Lock here, but just, just lock adjacent. Look, I mean, yeah. Lock, lock adjacent. Hey, drew locks on the team. So we'll, right. <laughs> we'll take that for what it's worth. Uh, but no, it's just looking at that number, looking what he did last year and just what is going on with this team. I mean, if Kenneth Walker is not healthy, um, I do like, you know, I do like DJ Dallas and Travis Homer from their pass catching upside. So, you know, Seattle trailing in this game, I think that there's some merit to kind of look at if they release any receiving props on those two guys, I would be interested. But as far as the rushing standpoint goes, when Rashad Penny's healthy, he is the guy you saw last year, the last six games of the season, this guy was hitting a hundred yards. And I think five out of the six games, he had one where it was under 50 yards. But other than that, I mean, he was getting the ball, rushing the rock, getting, getting it in, red zone uh getting the red zone attempts he had six touchdowns in those six games so i just think any any type of way that seattle's able to stay in this game and to stay afloat it would be to give rashad penny the rock here now i want to talk about uh, some other props here in a second but i do want to give you dap uh, we're going to be talking tomorrow or, well, tomorrow's our recap we'll like look back at bets in the past week your spread bets on thursday were the bucks minus two and a half Steelers plus six and a half and the Texans plus seven and a half. So uh, <laughs> I know go. that you're more of a prop guy, but Ryan, I think I'm going to nudge you towards spreads uh, as well. Good for because That was a pretty good, uh, pretty good little debut for you there. Okay. Let's open up the board here and talk about some top props for me. 
The thing that stands out most is I want some Noah Fant unders. It seems like he's going to split a lot of work with Will Disley. Uh, Will Disley got brought back and actually signed a pretty big contract, a weirdly big contract uh, yeah. with the Seahawks. I'm expecting, A, I'm expecting this game to be kind of somewhat close based on what my numbers say about this game. Uh, that leads to more rush attempts for Seattle, which could be good for your penny bet as well. And if they're going to be run heavy, they're going to push the ball to DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, potentially Will Disley. That's not going to leave a lot for Noah Fant. Now, my preferred route for this is under 24 and a half receiving yards. That's minus 113. You could also look towards the reception market. Uh, Fant right there, under two and a half, minus 113. I could see like dump off type situations. So my preferred one is going with uh, Fant under 24 and a half receiving yards uh, at minus 113 is my that's my favorite property entire game to be fully honest i think that's the the way i would go first but among the markets we have not discussed yet right any other value for you yeah i like uh this sucks because i'm a mizzou guy but i always botch his name albert oak one what oak when benam oak i i like when during the draft process uh a couple because like i don't don't judge me. I liked Drew Locke more than I should have. It was a bad mistake. We've all moved on. I've been wrong a lot, and that was one of the times. I but I had to like figure out Okuebanam's name because of that. So that's like a, a name that I can actually I feel very confident. In. Albert Okuebanam, one of my favorites yes. to say. Albert Albert O. His yes. over <laughs> three and three and a half. Uh you're getting plus money on that. And we we know that Russell in the past has liked to target these these tight ends. Uh the rookie that they drafted, Greg Dolchitz, he's on the IR, I believe, not expected to play. So Albert O could be seeing a lot of this, a lot of uh, work here in this offense. And you know, especially if they're able to get pressure, uh quarterback looking for tight end. I, I like getting that if it's gonna be at plus money um at this number. And then uh the the other the other ones, if we just talk about the quarterbacks again, uh Geno Smith, anytime touchdown at plus seven fifty, oh, yeah. uh has some I have some merit <laughs> to that. I mean, he, he did he did it in one start last year. Uh in the preseason, we saw him rushing for whatever for whatever that's worth. I mean, I just think that Geno's the type of guy that will go out there and just want to make plays. Like he is a gamer, which is why I kind of yeah. do like the Seattle side more so than if it was Drew Locke starting. Because if we're taking a quarterback who has that ability to rush with his legs, keep drives alive, I, I do I do think there's some merit to that. Uh DK Metcalf. I'm just all over him. So first touchdown, you're getting 12 to one on that. Why not? Let's take a chance and then go back to Russell Wilson at the quarterbacks to throw an interception plus 158 going back into Seattle. We saw I think it was 10 quarterbacks yesterday threw an interception. That includes Aaron Rodgers. That includes Tom Brady, uh, both on the road, I mind you. So. Quarterbacks, when we're getting that plus number, I mean, this is a this is just the you know trend that I'm kind of seeing to start the year that has some merit to it at plus money. It's plus one fifty eight, I believe, right now in the FanDuel sportsbook. So that's one that would be fun uh, to get, and you could definitely see a way that you know Russ is able to make a mistake, but Denver can still win this game. And interceptions are things that occur on deep passes for the most part. You know, when yeah. it's a, a not Jameis quarterback, and like Russ throws deep. So I think right. that's a, a totally viable bet. So uh, Russ to throw a pick there. Very interesting. DK Metcalf first touchdown, 12 to one. I typically do tend to favor underdogs when I think they'll be competitive in the first touchdown market, just because people don't account for the idea that you get the ball first, stuff like that. So I, I right. am overall philosophically in line with that one as well. Any final thoughts for you, Ryan, uh, on this pretty fun Monday Night football opener for week number one? Yeah, I would just I would just say, you know, just you go go with your go with your instincts here and don't don't go too crazy, uh, especially if you're like me yeah. and, you know, you had you had a good Sunday to start the day and then Dallas comes out that gets hurt and they you know only put up three points against Tampa Bay. Uh, so you don't want to go too crazy. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead and just, you know, make some safe bets to close out the week. Have some fun with it. And uh, load up for load up for week two, because week two is going to be uh, just as fun, I think, as week one was. I'm excited to talk some week two tomorrow on the podcast and recap how good Ryan's bets were in week number one. That'll all be tomorrow. I'll pitch Ninja on as well to talk some K-Props. That's all we have here for today. And for week number one here on the show, though, once again, follow Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, it was a pleasure to meet you and your wife this weekend here in Chicago. I hope you dried out uh, since last night. I'll talk to you once again on Thursday to pre preview week two. Sounds good, Jim. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys next time.
Absolutely. That is Ryan Williams, Ryan Alexander underscore W on Twitter. I am at Jim Sadas on Twitter. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. We are back once again tomorrow and all throughout this week. Thank you all for listening. Good luck. Enjoy Monday Night Football. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. You're uncovering the spread. 